In this episode of Acme's Ideas, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable DIY holiday gift bag. So stay tuned! Hello and welcome. I'm Akram Tagavi Burris, and you're watching Akram's Ideas, bringing creative and crazy ideas to life. In this holiday special edition of Akram's Ideas, I'm actually taking part in the DIY Christmas gift collaboration project, along with several other YouTube seamstress. Uh, each week this month, they featured a how-to video of how to make a quick, easy holiday gift. Now, I will put in the comments below links to everyone's projects that's participated in this collaboration. As for my project, I have put together an easy DIY holiday gift tote bag. And remember, if you like what you see, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. And I'd love to hear in the comments below what you've got planned as far as holiday sewing goes. So with that said, let's talk a little more about our holiday tote bag. Now this is an actually a really easy project for a beginner. Um, let's say for instance, you're not quite ready to take on a full holiday project. This little tote bag takes a minimal of fabric and it's just a few stitches here and there to get it um, put together. And while it's just a simple tote bag construction, we've added some holiday charm to it, a ribbon accessory onto the tote bag to give it the look of a Christmas package, along with this lovely ribbon bow. So with that said, let me show you how to put this tote bag together. To make our DIY holiday tote bag, basically what you're going to need is you're going to need uh, two pieces of fabric for the main body of the tote bag. And the size of this bag is, or the size of these fabric pieces are going to depend on how big you want your bag. Now for this particular tote bag it's going to have half inch seam allowances all the way around so you're going to have to take into consideration um, regarding the half inch seam allowance plus we're going to make a bottom from the panels themselves and in this sample I'm actually going to be making a two inch bottom uh, a two inch wide bottom which means uh, one inch from both sides will become part of the bottom. So in this particular case I have a rectangle here that is 11 inches wide by 10 inches tall and when all is said and done we're going to actually end up with a bag that is 10 inches wide by eight inches tall because again we're going to have a half inch on both sides but one inch of that height is also going to be a part of the bottom of the bag. So you kind of want to give yourself some um, room to play with and determine you know how big you're going to need it your bag to be. But like I said you're going to need two rectangles and you're going to make those measurements. Again in this case I'm using 11 inch wide fabric by 10 inches tall. Along with the fabric of the main body, you're also going to need some fabric for the handles of the tote bag. And in my case, I wanted my handles to be one inch, one inch in width. And in order to do that, I've cut um, fabric here that is 11 inches wide, since it's the same width of our fabric, and 3 inches tall. And that gives us a fold over so that when we fold this in half we will have 1 inch and then we will have that half inch on both sides here to create uh, the seam allowance. Now, I am using very thin cotton for this tote bag, and because of that, I have ended up uh, interfacing the handles, so just to give them a little bit more durability um, 
and, and make them last a little bit longer. Now, if you're using more of a canvas or a thicker material, you probably don't need to interface those. So, before we get started uh, on putting our tote bag together, we're going to make a few markings. As I mentioned before, we have two rectangles here, um, and one is going to be the front, one is going to be the back, and you can just set one aside for right now. We're going to work on one. Now, we had talked about that we're going to have a half inch seam allowance all the way around and this is going to be an unlined tote bag and since it's unlined we're going to need some method of um, encasing some of the raw edges especially the raw edge here at the top now like i said there's a half inch seam allowance so the best way to set this up is to just fold over your um, top half here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to find the half inch at the top here. And I'm going to mark that with some chalk. And that's my half inch seam allowance right there at the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come turn flip the fabric around and I'm going to fold it along that seam allowance and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take this raw edge and fold it back inside there so it's going to fold over just like so so basically I'm going to take it, fold it over, and it's going to lay flat like this. And I'm going to do this at the iron so that it stays in place. As you can see here, I've taken that half inch, I've folded it over, and then folded it over again. So I end up with a little quarter inch fold all along the top here. And I just ironed that flat right now. We're going to actually top stitch that later. Um, but I've just ironed it flat to get it out of the way for right now. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to set up some decoration on this tote bag. And if you recall from the sample earlier, we're actually going to make it look like a gift wrapped package. And to do that, I've actually got some, some ribbon here. And this is just some craft ribbon, uh, nothing too fancy. Um, mine is kind of a green, a neon green color. And in order to do this, we're going to want to have your, both your front and your back piece side by side. So we can kind of get reference to where they are. And so they have them lined up. And we're going to start with the ribbon that goes across um, horizontally across the package. And we want them want your front and back side by side so that we can line up so that the ribbon matches up when we sew it. So again, it looks like a package that's been wrapped from front to back. How far up do you want your ribbon to be? This depends again on the bottom of your bag. Now recall, we have a half inch um, for our seam allowance and then we're going to do a two inch bottom which means I'm going to need one inch on both the front and the back so that means I need to have my ribbon at least one and a half inches um, above that in order for it to be seen on the front of the bag otherwise it's going to get caught at the bottom of the bag and just to be on the safe side I'm actually going to measure up two and a half inches a little bit here so that I know for sure that this ribbon is actually going to be somewhere in the center of our bag. And again, I've got my front and my back pieces kind of lined up here. And I'm just going to take my ribbon, just like so, and I'm going to just sort of place it where I want it. And I'm going to cut it to length. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the same thing for the other side. Now, my ribbon that I'm using is rather translucent. And because of that, I'm actually going to cut two strips and actually stitch them on top of each other so that um, they give a little bit more color and a little bit more depth. 
So there's my two layers of ribbon here. And I'm just going to take some pins and I'm going to just uh, strategically pin them kind of in place here. If they're a little longer or a little um, shorter than a seam allowance, as long as they get close to seam allowance, that's all that's really mattered. And you're going to try your best to get them lined up. Again, it's going to look like you've taken some ribbon around a present, so it doesn't have to be exact. Now, once you have one, again, you're going to want to, and I'll just pull my first piece over a little bit and bring my other piece. And again, I'm just going to line these up so that I can see where that ribbon ended. And I'm going to come over here and kind of line it up so that the ribbons match. And this is also going to be nice when we do our side seams, we're going to kind of match up um, where the ribbons are so that we know that they line up pretty good. And again, I'm just going to do two because my ribbon is rather translucent. If you're ribbon, if you are working with a ribbon that's more opaque, then you won't probably have to um, double up on your ribbon. Uh, you could probably get away with just one. So I'm just going to do a couple of pins just to hold it slightly in place. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch right on top of it as close to this edge of the ribbon uh, on the inside of the ribbon. So from the side of the ribbon as close as the edge as we can. And we're going to do it at the top of the ribbon and at the bottom of the ribbon. We're going to go all the way um, from edge to edge. What I've done is, like I said, I've got my ribbon and I've got my foot just along the edge here. And I've got my needle positioned all the way to the right side. And I am actually just using a standard straight stitch, uh, two and a half stitch width. I'm also using this green, uh, bright green thread. Now, Theoretically, I could have used a, a red thread, but since my, my ribbon is a neon green and I'm actually stitching on the ribbon, I thought that it would be nice. I also thought the, the green stitching um, with the red would be some nice contrast, and it also makes it easier for you guys to kind of see um, as we do some uh, stitching here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and again, I'm just going to... And I'm going to do some back stitching. The back stitching is kind of optional because that part is going to get sewn up into the seam. And all you're going to want to do as you go through here is kind of make sure that the ribbons are setting as even as possible on here. Again, it's supposed to look like a package that has been hand wrapped. So if it's a little off, it's not that big a deal. And there you can see the um, stitching of the ribbon onto the bag. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Now here is my front piece of my tote bag. And again, I've got the ribbon going horizontally just as I do on the back side. And now what we want to do is do a vertical ribbon going um, across here. And just like at the bottom half, you're going to want to take into consideration your half inch seam allowance and move it over some. Now this ribbon is going to be slightly different since the ends of our horizontal ribbon actually get wrapped up into the seam allowance. Um, the end of the top half of our vertical ribbon needs to fold over into this overlap we have here that's finishing off the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ribbon, I'm going to figure out where I want it, and I'm going to roll over and I'm going to fold it into that overlap. So I'm going to take it about right here, make sure that it's in the overlap, fold the overlap back over, put a pin right in it, just like so. If we take a look, what we have is we have the ribbon folded over here, and if I wrap it back around, we have the ribbon coming back around. And at the bottom here, 
at the bottom, we can just cut it off um, at the end of where the fabric is because that's going to get put into the seam allowance. But again, you want to make sure that you've folded it into that fold. And I'm going to have to do this twice because, again, I'm going to want to make this a little bit more opaque simply because of the type of the ribbon that I have. Now, for the back side, we don't want to set these side by side. Instead, you're going to take your back panel and you're going to find the top of your back panel. Remember, that's the side that we folded over. And you're going to line up the tops of them. And this is because if we were doing this as a package, this vertical ribbon would be on the opposite side of the back. So we want to line them up here. Um, tops facing each other. So this is the top edge and this is the top edge of my back. This is the top edge of my front. And we're basically going to line it up, get our ribbon, figure out where it needs to be. And so it needs to be about right here. And then we're going to measure out. And remember, I'll also have to do that fold on the back ribbon as well so that the ribbon matches up into that seam at the or the seam fold at the very top of the bag something like that and I'll do that twice so that I have the two uh, ribbons on top of each other as you can see I have my front of the tote bag and the back of my tote bag and they're kind of mirrored of each other now before we put these two pieces together let's work on the handles for these so I'm just going to set my tote bag aside for a moment. And what we're going to do, now you can do this a couple of ways. One is you could fold this over and you can go ahead, fold it over and stitch along the long lengthwise here your half inch seam allowance. But if you do that, you're going to have to turn the the fabric back out through the openings at the end. And I really hate turning fabric. And since these are going to get top stitched anyways, an alternative to this is something that I've learned a couple of years ago online somebody mentioned is that you could fold your seam allowance inward and then iron it down and just stop to stop top stitch the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my half inch line here. So that's half inch on that side. I'm going to find my half inch on the other side. And I'm going to go to my iron and I'm going to iron these to the inside. So I'm going to iron down the top here and then I'm going to iron down the bottom half. Once I have both these sides ironed, I'm going to fold the whole thing in half and iron that. So here you can see are my ironed straps and as I open them up here you can see that I ironed in a half inch on both the top and the bottom and then I folded it over and ironed it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch along the top and the bottom of length wide. We don't necessarily do need to do the bottom here because they're going to get put into the top seam allowance. So here you can see I have top stitched on the straps and I used the same settings that I did for the ribbon. I just did a two and two and a half stitch width um, with a straight stitch and I did um, I placed this right at the edge of my a presser foot and had the needle all the way over to the right. Now um, the next thing we're going to do is actually attach the straps before we put the two pieces of the bag together. So very similar to how we attach the top piece, uh, the top ribbon here, is that basically I'm going to take the strap and here for example is the front of the bag and I'm going to kind of, let me I'm going to kind of figure out where I want this and uh, kind of centering it up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just put the raw edges in that fold there. And I'm going to do it on the same thing on the other side. Just about like that. Just like so. 
and I'm going to put some pins in here to kind of hold them in place and then I'm going to flip it back over and put my actual pins in on this side just like so and again if I decide that they're a little too off or something or if they need to be spread out a little bit more I can do that now just getting in there and I need to check and make sure that they're actually within that fold and basically I'm going to just to hop stitch along the top edge here all the way across and that's going to capture our bag handle and everything for the back of the bag just like we did with the top ribbon you're going to kind of line these up to figure out that where that handle needs to go so that the handles are kind of lined up and then once you've got that you're going to do the same thing you're going to put the end of the handle into that fold get it into place pin it up and top stitch you can see the front and the back with the handles and all I've done is I've top stitched along the top so I'll put them in place and as you can see from the back they're kind of folded over into that crease at the top now the last little bits uh, that we need to do now is actually uh, stitch the front and the back together and there's a couple of ways that you can do this now one of the things to keep in mind is that right now we have raw edges so if we wanted to just sew them straight on to each other we would take the back and front line them up just like so and stitch your half inch all the way around um, from the sides the bottom and the other side but again you have some raw edges here so you could ultimately use some pinking shears to clean up these raw edges uh, especially if you're using a thicker fabric that doesn't fray as bad that would be a really good alternative and since we're not lining this bag we need some way to finish our edges I'm actually using a very thin cotton fabric and because of that it's got a lot of frays so since I don't want to line the bag for me the best alternative was to use French seams and I do have a video where I show how to do French seams and I'll put the link in the comments below uh, but basically what you do with French seams is instead of sewing right sides together you actually sew wrong sides together so I would put the front and back together just like they would normally set wrong sides together so this is how it would look normally when it's all done and what you're going to do is you're going to like I said wrong sides together and you're going to stitch and instead of stitching your full seam allowance you're only going to stitch a quarter inch of that once you have a quarter inch of it all sewn up you're going to go to your iron and open that and press that seam open once that seam is open you're going to trim back as close as possible to that seam stitch that seam stitch once that's all done you're going to flip it over and sew again a second stitch at your remaining seam allowance and since we're doing half inch our remaining seam allowance is going to be another quarter inch so here is the main body of our bag as you can see um, what I've done on the inside is I have actually I have actually given it French seams here and it's looking pretty good the only thing now is that we need to go ahead and create our bottom because it doesn't have a flat bottom now alternatively you could leave it like this if you were giving something kind of flat maybe if you needed a smaller gift bag you were just putting a gift card or something in it but if you actually wanted to put something of substance in this we need to give this sort of a bottom half so I'm going to turn it to the inside and again you can see those French seams keep everything nice and clean on the inside so you don't need to line the bag 
And what we're going to do in order to create our bottom, we're going to go to one side of the bag first, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to lay this corner out flat so we get this point, this triangle here. And it doesn't really matter where you put uh, your seam allowance. You can go to one side or the other, but you want to be consistent on both sides. So I'm just going to I'm just going to fold my seam allowance so that it's facing this side here. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to stitch a stitch all the way across this triangle point. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a box corner for our bag so that we'll have a flat bottom. The amount in that you bring in the triangle that you cut off the triangle is going to be half the width of the bottom, um, the overall bottom. So if I want a two inch bottom, I know that I only need to sew one inch down from the tip of this triangle. So I've got my little one inch squares here on my cutting mat. And I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some chalk and I'm going to mark that one inch right there. So all I have to do is now stitch along that chalk line. And I'm going to do this on the other side as well. And remember, we're doing this on the side seam. So we're going to open our side seams up, and then we're going to measure out one inch from the tip and sew along there. As you can see, I have gone ahead and stitched right along that chalk line. And I've done it to both side seams here. And it's just one inch from that corner point. So again, if we take a look from the inside, this is what our bag looks like. We've boxed out the corners on the inside. So if I flip this bag around, when I flip it around, you can see that I've got now this bottom square part portion. And I'll have the same on the other side. It looks like it lines up right with that ribbon there. Just like so. So now I have a boxed cornered bag. So it's going to hold stability a little bit more and it's going to be a little bit more stable. And then this is the bottom. This is what you can see from the bottom of the bag. So we have our ribbon on our bag. It's looking quite festive. The only thing left to do is to make a bow to be placed on the front of the bag. Now to do that, I'm going to set my bag aside and I'm going to get out my ribbon. And the first thing, let me bring my bag back actually, is to kind of figure out how big of a bow do you want. You know, you don't want it too big to be a little overwhelming. Eh, something like about that size looks pretty good. So you do one fold over or so to see how big you want it. And so you take that fold over and we're going to do a couple of loops around, uh, about six loops or so. And the more loops, the fluffier your bow. This works a lot better if you have a if you have a ribbon that has wire in it. My ribbon doesn't, so it's going to be a little bit of a flatter bow um, than a than a big puffy bow. So you've got a couple of loops in it. You're going to go ahead and cut off the end so that it lines up, and then you're going to crease it in the middle. You're going to fold it in half, and at that halfway. At that halfway mark, you're going to go ahead and create a couple of notches. If I open this back up, you should have something that looks like this now. And what we're going to do next is we're going to take another piece of our ribbon and we're going to go in here and we're basically going to tie this off right in that crease. We're going to get into that those notches and we're going to tie it off. and tie a pretty tight little bow here and tie it a second time tight as we can and then I'm going to cut off the ends of this tie that we just used because we don't need those 
so it's pretty tight and now what we're going to do is we're basically just going to spread apart the pieces of the bow. We're going to put something along the lines of that is what we want. And then once you've gotten that, all you're going to do is you're going to take a needle and thread and stitch it on the cross section of your bag. So we're just going to use some needle and thread, preferably the green that we've been using here, and stitch it onto our bag. putting the tote bag together. As you can see here, I've filled it with some tissue paper and the gift. And uh, you can make several of these relatively easy. As you can see, I've got another one here. So I've made a couple of these um, to put holiday gifts in. And you can make them at various sizes, just trying to keep in mind uh, your seam allowance and what you plan to actually gift inside those tote bags. Um, once again, I encourage you to check out all the other videos in this collaboration project um, to get some more DIY Christmas gift ideas. And as I said before, I would love to hear in the comments below what you guys are planning to make for the holidays as far as Christmas gifts. Do you have any interesting things that you're putting together? I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Akram's Ideas. Don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to follow us on social media or subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.